What's up, Warriors? Guy Beverage here with Protectors Toolkit. Christian safety and security made simple. Man, that intro music just gets me every time. It gets me in the mood to be here on Warrior Wednesday with you warriors, you church protectors, you men and women who have chosen to stand up for your churches to make sure that the flock is protected. Whether they're, whether they're there for comfort, refuge, worship, or learning, or all of those together, you are there to stand on the wall to make sure that they are protected. And I thank you all for doing that. And I thank you for being here tonight for another edition of Warrior Wednesday. So why do I say what's up warriors and why do I call you warriors? Well, here's what I know about the Lord. If you look in Exodus real quick, 15, three, it says the Lord is a warrior and the Lord is his name. I understand that I was made in his image and you are too. So we are warriors and especially in this mission field that we're on, we are warriors. So again, thank you for being that warrior. Thank you for being out there. Thank you for being here at Warrior Wednesday. We're gonna have a great time tonight. We're gonna to talk about increasing your team effectiveness. I think this is so vitally important in this day and age, whether we're attending church live and in person uh, or we're doing virtual, you know, if we're still doing some of that or we're doing an amalgamation or a combination of those two things, we wanna make sure that our team is effective as possible. Without an effective team, easily uh, you can see how the wolves uh, that we were foretold and the roaring lions that are coming against us could easily enter into the church and onto our property and we could miss that so we want to be as effective as possible and by doing that we make sure that we have the eight things that i'm going to talk about tonight and a bonus so really nine uh we're going to make sure we have all these things in place and i hope this blesses you now i'm going to go a little bit quickly as i normally do but don't uh, get lost in the sauce as they say we're going to put them up on the screen and each one of these is also going to be put out uh, for you to understand what I'm talking about as well. But let's get into who we are here at Protectors Toolkit. Uh, Proverbs 18, 15 is kind of a guiding leading verse for us. An intelligent heart acquires knowledge and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. In that great easy to read version of the Bible that I sometimes have to go to to get a better understanding, it says it this way. Wise people want to learn more, so they listen closely to gain knowledge. And I've spent a lot of time over 30 years listening to gain knowledge, and I still do it to this day. And I like to bring out as much as I can from my time in the military, uh, current time in law enforcement and overseas contracting. I like to bring you as much as you can to protect the flocks that you're trying to protect at your church. So let's get into this and talk about how we improve our team effectiveness. You know, high performing church protector teams focus on uh, maintaining clear communication. Uh, they have alignment, they have buy in from their team members and extreme accountability. We must have that in our ministry. We have to have that extreme accountability. Um, effective teams, the leadership, leadership exists at every level, whether it's top down, horizontally. This is also in a church environment. We have leadership at every level. And when we empower the people on our team, we have more leadership than maybe we even realize. Working with volunteers is really no different than any other corporation. Um, when you implement the nine steps I'm going to give you tonight, you're gonna to have better team effectiveness. So we're all busy trying to build, develop, and lead our church protector teams um, while maintaining our situational awareness and maintaining uh, the volunteer core that we have out there. So let's keep this short and sweet for you tonight. Here are the nine ways to increase team effectiveness for your protector teams. Number one, I think this uh, should go without saying, but I always put it at the top of the list to make sure that we're thinking the same thing. We have to assure, ensure alignment and buy-in from the members of our team. Not only the members of our team, but our church. Our church, we have to have alignment with them, with their goals and desires, and we have to have buy-in from our church, from our executive leadership within our church, right? So without alignment and buy-in, buy uh, uh, the battle cannot be won. That's just that's just point blank. I'm going to put it to you that way. It's typically easy if yours is a newly formed team to get that alignment and buy in. If you have a very new team, you're very uh, in the infancy stages of your church safety and security uh, protector team. It's easy to get that alignment. It's, it's easy to get that buy in at that point. Those seasoned teams, the teams that have been doing this for a little while, sometimes have a little problem if they're going to do a realignment. 
because sometimes complacency has set into the team, or I hate to say it, but I think we all know this, entitlement has settled into the team at some point as well, right? I don't work the parking lot anymore. I've graduated up to working only on the inside. That type of entitlement mentality, we've got to break that, especially if we're going to realign uh, we let everyone have a voice when we're going to do this as well. If we're going to have a new realignment, uh, we're going to birth this thing new, then we have to let everybody have a voice on the team. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody's voice counts and we're going to do everything everybody wants us to. It means that they have a voice and, more importantly, that we listen to them and we give them feedback on why we could or could not implement what they were talking to us about. So alignment and buy-in is very critical. Number two, we're going to clarify goals roles and responsibilities. I'll say that again. We're going to clarify goals with a G, roles with an R, and responsibilities. You know, I, I equate everything to, to being on a battlefield or being in a war because we are uh, in, in a definite war, in a spiritual war all the time. Uh, all those things unseen going on around us and, and those savage wolves and the roaring lions are foretold that they are coming against us. They are going to attack us. So we are in a constant battle. So it requires a shift in focus on our priorities sometimes. Uh, many churches right now are changing the way they operate, sometimes weekly, uh, based on local laws or restrictions, based on statewide mandates, stuff like that. Um, so we're changing our operational procedures sometimes weekly, and we have to make sure that the goals are understood, the roles are understood, and our responsibilities are understood whenever we change something like that. We ensure everybody on the team understands their responsibilities. They understand what accountability is and their own accountabilities, how their job functions align with everybody else on the team and with the church and the mission of the church. And we make sure everybody knows the why. Why am I doing this? Why is this important? We don't simply give somebody a post like standing out in the parking lot, waving your arm like a lunatic without telling them why that's important. We call it aggressive hospitality. Here's why it's important. You're our first line of defense. You're first eye. Here's honest situation. Uh, ID or just look right or a cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs have shown up on our property and you're going to give that information to us. So we make sure that people understand uh, their goals. What is the goal for their position? What are the what are the different roles that, uh, and how do they align with one another and how do they work together? And what are the responsibilities that each of those have and how do we play with each other in the sandbox, so to speak? And along with that, we want to make sure what, what this does for us, if we get the goals, the roles and responsibilities clearly understood, it's going to make us a little bit immune to some of those typical things we could see in a workspace. Whether it's a volunteer at a church or your business, these kind of uh, uh, the, these things that plague teams are, are, are pretty similar uh, across all uh, industries. So jealousy, obviously, we're going to try to prevent that or make us immune from that. Uh, claims of unfairness, you're not being fair to me, gossip, skepticism, uh, interpersonal conflicts over my duties or my responsibilities, and then fear of personal attack. So we're going to make ourselves or we're going to indemnify ourselves or make ourselves a little bit immune to those things when we clearly define the goals, the roles, and the responsibilities. So that's uh, that's the other benefit to that. Number three, engage in proper planning and, when necessary, rapid execution. So you know, for, folks, I say this all the time, the body cannot go where the brain has never been. I'll say it one more time. The body cannot go where the brain has never been. I heard this from my friend Mark Warren uh, at Stratagos International a long time ago, and it's really stuck with me. And I think it's uh, vitally important that we understand that. We program our brain through policies and procedures and training so we can perform if there is a crisis or we're called on in some sort of crisis or dynamic event. So when the, if the battle is going on and the battle is being waged, whether it's a, we, it, whether it is a medical emergency that's happening or a lost child, we don't want to have analysis paralysis. I've said this before on some of the other Warrior Wednesdays, analysis paralysis, where we overthink the problem. We uh, continue to overthink the problem. You know, it's been said before um, that a bad plan executed now is sometimes better than a great plan executed later. And you can see in a medical emergency or a lost child, where we want to have the right training, we want to have our brain already programmed that we can get into crisis mode and start working rapidly. That, that way we have everybody pulling in the right direction, we have everybody working in the right direction, and our teams are working together. You know, it was drilled into, the, into me early on in the Army, don't run to your own death. Don't run to your own death. Sometimes good enough means good to go. 
uh, sometimes getting it done and getting into action is a lot more important than uh, anal over analyzing something. And it could be important for that person who's having that medical emergency for sure. Role clarity, communication, and accountability will provide the team the ability to course correct if they need to. This is why it's so vitally important where I say all the time, go to the membership site, get engaged in our membership site, sign up to be a member of Protectors Toolkit. This right here, proper planning is in the membership site. When you sign up for the membership site, we have protector plans. So you don't have to guess anymore what you're doing for training for your team. It's right there, it's built for you, it's easy to do. Listen, I understand you work a nine to five job, Monday through Friday, church safety and security does take a backseat role sometimes, unless you're full time uh, at your church in a safety and security role. So I made it easy for you, it's in the membership site, get involved, I'll give you a code at the end of this so you can get in there for, uh, for a discounted price, okay? So in, in, in relationship to that, number four is develop people and teams. Develop people and teams. Look, I know, I know, I know the budgets that we all operate in right now, you have a ton of money and sometimes you don't even know what to do with all the money you're given in your church safety and security ministry, right? That's a joke, folks. I understand you're dealing with shortened budgets, small budgets, tiny budgets, maybe even non-existent budgets currently. But I want you to understand this. When research, when research is done about this, whether it's church protector or any other uh, thing, when you invest in people, when you try to, when you prioritize development and training, you retrain your volunteers um, and you prioritize that, you retain your volunteers for a lot longer. When we invest in people, we have higher levels of engagement. We deliver great products. We do deliver a product. We, uh, we offer a service uh, in the church safety and security ministry. By and large, those lightning strike events like active shooter are not really happening. I call them lightning strike events because that's really what they are. You more likely have a lightning strike at your church than an active shooter. Doesn't mean we don't plan for it, but we want to make sure that we are offering a service all the time. And this is it right here. We develop our people and teams by investing in them. So what does that mean? Does it mean that maybe uh, we can invest in a training for the team We uh, where there's no cost to the team? We have someone come in um, like Protectors Toolkit to train our team. There's no cost to the members to attend that training. Sure, it could work that way. Do we supply uh, bullets for our team when they go and do their two-day uh, firearms course with, with uh, Protectors Toolkit. Yes, maybe we can do that. When we invest in people, we have higher levels of engagement. They deliver great products and services, which is what we want. We delight our customers, everybody that we, we interact with, and even the ones that we don't interact with are our customers. When if you're on our property, you are our customer. We're gonna give you great customer service. And we generate within our team better esprit de corps within each other. So invest in people. That's very important to develop our people and our teams. So the real question here is, can you afford not to do this? Figure out a way. Maybe there's a, a secret donor out there or somebody wants to donate to the church or to the team to get this done for you. And we want to invest in our team. We want to keep those volunteers engaged. And number five, we want to create good feedback loops, uh, loops and learning and accountability. What do I mean by that? We're going to create good feedback loops. Well, I think every leader understands this. Uh, all high performing teams have a learning culture with transparent feedback. We need that in this ministry. I need my team members to tell me if something is not working. I need my team members to tell me if something needs to change. I need my team members to tell me if I'm wrong in something. I have to have the humility to take that as a leader. And it's crucial for the execution or the, the performance of our team to be able to do that. An environment of mental safety uh, and respectful conflict is part of the culture of a church safety and security um, team uh, to be able to function well and uh, like a well-oiled mach machine. You know, one of the great tools that I typically use and I've used for a long time in my career is a good AAR, an after action review. You've seen me put this out on Monday mornings. I want to know what you've done at your church. You see it on the Facebook page. What happened at your church? What went well? What didn't go well? And that's no different at my church or anything else I've done where there's an incident that has happened and I need to get that information. It is very timely. And we get that information to everybody on the team. What happened? What went well? What didn't work well? What are improvements do we need? Um, all the, what equipment could have helped us in this situation? By documenting these things and getting it to everybody on our team, now they all understand what we're dealing with, whether you were off or you were part of the event. Now we have a good deconstruction of that and everybody has a feedback into that on what went well, what didn't go well, what equipment could we have 
had on hand to make this better, those things. Status, rank, emotion, um, all those things are left at the door. Teams uh, discussing what's going well, what isn't, plans for improvement, all that kind of stuff is necessary for team growth. And it's vitally important for effective teams that we have that good feedback loop with that. Number six, we're going to design teams. This is what we're doing. It is a team mentality and we're not building hierarchies. Just like corporate America does, they build the hierarchies. We're not going to do that within our team. Everybody pulls the same way. Everybody uh, does the job that is necessary. We probably, uh, at some point or another, uh, we've been a we've been a part in our lives. Uh, if you worked in a corporation of overmanaged, underled organizations uh, with significant top-down hierarchical uh, approaches, for the church protector teams, that's not going to work for us. Yes, we have leadership in within our teams. We have executive leadership from the church, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're not talking about I'm the boss and you got to do what I say. We're talking about I'm the boss and I'm going to work beside you. I'm going to help you with this. I'll also work the parking lot. I'll drive the golf cart. Those type of things are all in service to our team. Uh, we're going to create cross-functional team members within this as well. The, you know the, other, the job of everybody else on the team. Now, I understand there's a difference between armed and unarmed, and you can't just go with, if you're on an unarmed team, you can't go into an armed team and transition into that, but you can know their roles, duties, and responsibilities for sure. Um, these cause, when we do this right, when we design teams and not hierarchicals or, or hierarchies, then we are building more trust in our teams. And that's vitally important to this, that we trust one another, that we trust one another, that the job is going to be done. If I ask you to do a certain job or a task or a function, I know that it's going to be done because I'm part of the team as well. Yes, I'm the leader. I make schedules. I tell, I do the training. Um, I write the budget and all that, but I'm still part of the team. This is where, quite frankly, wins are shared by everybody and losses are shouldered by leadership in this. Number seven, I think this is so vitally important as well. I maybe should have moved this up further on the list. I don't know how you feel about this, but run effective meetings. This is a meeting for our church safety and security. Again, we have the protector plans right there in the membership site. So drop in there, uh, get in. It's, it's easy to get out if you don't like it. If it's not a blessing to you in any way, you can simply ask us and we'll let you out of it. But listen, we run effective meetings and it's not a, Hey, you, or, Hey, I just thought about this. Let's have a meeting right now. People have lives outside of church. These are volunteer armies that we have. These are volunteers that are serving in our church safety and security ministry. So we want to respect their time. What are meetings? What are meetings? Well, we, they're planned. That's what meetings are. We plan meetings. We make sure we've all been part of meetings. that could have been emails. I'm sure at some point in our lives. So make sure that a meeting is not just to have a meeting. A meeting is not just so I can have more face time with you. A meeting is not a, Hey, you, or let's do this right now, right after church. I need to catch you uh, to do this meeting or this training right now. Um, we have meetings for the right reasons and we have the right people there um, that come prepared and we have clear action items and we have deliverables and we start on time and we end on time. And don't forget, leaders, take advantage of technology. I think uh, with the COVID, I, I think we've understood that technology is our friend. If you've run virtual church for any length of time, you now know Zoom is possible. StreamYard is the one that I use for this training right here. And all those platforms out there are great because if you can't be in my meeting physically, I can stand up a camera. I can do a Facebook Live with just you and have you in the meeting with us so you don't miss anything. People need to take vacation. People need to take time off and get uh, detached from the church. One of our latest uh, trainings was in uh, how we built resiliency. If it's, it's in the membership group, how do you build resiliency in your teams? That training is in there, and I talked about that. You don't need to attend every church service. You will feel like that sometimes. Uh, but it's, it's, it's going to burn you out and you have to have resiliency in this uh, for sure. So take advantage of that technology as well. Number eight, increase though face-to-face -face interaction. In this time and space where we're not meeting in person in church, it doesn't mean that we don't necessarily meet, need to meet as our church safety and security ministry. We have to have a way to continue to connect and we also have to have we also have a deliverable to the church to make sure that if they're only doing virtual church, that the church is still safe. There are people inside the church, whether they're recording on a Wednesday and broadcasting on Sunday or they're doing all recording or broadcasting on Sunday. There's people there. 
we have a duty and responsibility to make sure that they are protected while they are at campus. So plan accordingly for that as well. You know, uh, I've spoken to some protector teams that have uh, seen a total breakdown in communication because of COVID. Uh, they fractured themselves. They don't know uh, who's on the team anymore. And I don't want that for your protector teams. If you had a good uh, team uh, in uh, February, March uh, of this year, then you need to have a good team when we come back out of this thing. Uh, if you're meeting in, per in person now, it's more important than ever to have those face-to-face -face connections. Uh, a, a great accountability philosophy I learned in the Army, too, was find work. There's always work to do, whether it's just walking around our church and making sure there's no bricks or something that can be thrown through a window. There's no ladders perched up against roofs that uh, somebody can easily access our roof and maybe our uh, heating and AC system, all those type of things. There's You can find some work in this space. So we have face-to-face -face interaction. We increase it as, as necessary. And then we'd also leverage technology whenever we uh, find that, too. We need to find ways to make it fun. That it's not just meeting for the sake of meeting. It's fun. It's engaging. And there is a set goal with the meeting. Okay. Number nine, the bonus one. Here it is for you leaders right here. I think it's vitally important that you understand this. Lead and get the heck out of the way. Be a leader and don't stand in the way of success. High performance teams use a decentralized approach to leadership. You see this in your high functioning uh, military special operations teams, whether it's SEALs, special forces, uh, PJs or MARSOC, uh, whatever it is, is a decentralized approach to leadership and dis decision making and execution. What are high performance church protector teams? Those are teams that have policies and procedures accompanied by quality qualified trainers that come and train their teams. And they have, they have a continuing education built into their program as well. That's a high performance church safety and security team. They succeed in that type of structure. It's a culture environment that they build. They excel at all the eight things that I listed above as well. Leaders and managers have the ability to define the objective for the teams and then get the heck out of the way. We set the aiming stakes, the left and the right aiming stake, and we get out of their way because people will exceed our expectations a lot of times. So make sure you understand that. So hopefully that's a blessing to you all protectors out there. There's the eight plus one, uh, really nine, uh, the eight plus the bonus there to get the heck out of the way leaders. And those are all be posted. So you don't have to kind of take notes as I'm going along. You can get all this information to come out for you. So don't worry about that. I know I sometimes talk fast. Now, here's some of the important things. Why don't we like and subscribe protectors toolkit? We uh, go to the YouTube video. Uh, hit that subscribe button, uh, hit the notification bell so you get notifications when we uh, post new content. Ray Coates, I see you out there again, brother. What a blessing to, uh, to me you are. Don't forget to check out our podcast, A Word and a Weapon. A new one's coming out pretty soon. Word and a Weapon is the podcast. I give you a little bit of the word, something that's impacted me in my life from the Bible, and I explain it a little bit deeper, and then a weapon, something you can take with you, a tool for your tool belt or your toolbox that is the everyday Christian. You can be walking around and be extra safe and secure. The membership site, I can't impress this upon you enough. Go to the membership site, sign up, be an inside member of Protector's Toolkit. Here's the code, promo code Warrior Wednesday, Warrior Wednesday. We'll get you in there and get your first month at only $10. Friends, you can afford that. Take up a collection at your church if you need to. Get $10. Don't buy Starbucks for one day. Whatever it takes. Don't buy that Slurpee. Get the $10 and get into the membership site. It's going to be such a blessing to you. I know that, and I want to hear your feedback once you get in there. What you'll also get from there is some of our new stuff that we've got in the membership side, uh, the closed group of our Facebook group for members only, the Hip Pocket Training. New hip pocket training is dropping tomorrow. So all you members already get out there and watch that for that hip pocket training coming out tomorrow. And so, like I said, go find us, like us, subscribe to all of our social media. It's vitally important as a ministry like this that you do that for us because there is somebody in your life you know that is struggling with church safety and security, whether it's a pastor who doesn't know what he's going to do to protect his church uh, or it's another protector like you that can benefit for, from messages like this. Go out there, share this far and wide. It's what we're supposed to do for each other. And as always, protectors, warriors, don't forget, keep them safe. Watch this new video after this.